In this video, we're going to learn to find the circumference of a circle. Use the given information to solve the problems. Show all of your work and include units in your answer. Write your answers in exact form and in rounded form to the hundredth place. So we saw in the media, le media lesson packet that if we're given a circle, this is the center of the circle and every point on the circle is equidistant from the center and we call the distance from the center to any point the radius, which we use the little letter R to denote that, or if we look at the center and we go straight across, that distance is called the diameter. Notice that the diameter is two times the radius, since this is a radius and this is a radius, so it would be two times the radius. Now notice a circle doesn't have any line segments, okay, like the other figures we found the perimeter of, so we can't just add up the length of the sides. It's a circle. There is no line. It's completely round. So we saw that. So that's why we have a special name for a circle. We don't call it the perimeter. We call it the circumference, but it is the distance around the circle. And we saw that the circumference is equal to pi times the diameter or 2 pi times the radius. So these are formulas. Okay. Notice that 2 times the radius is the diameter. So you don't really need both of these formulas if you remember this relationship. Now this symbol pi is a Greek letter and this is a very important number in mathematics. Okay. If you look at your calculator somewhere on it there's a pi button. It's right here. And this is a decimal approximation of pi. 3.14159265 and it keeps going. This uh, decimal expansion doesn't have any pattern. It's actually called an irrational number. So we frequently, when we want an approximation, we're going to use that pi is approximately 3.14. And in real life, depending on how accurate you want it to be, you could use more of the decimal places in the pi expansion. So when we write uh, our answers in exact form, we're going to use the symbol pi to represent that decimal expansion. And when we write in rounded form, we're going to use this approximation to get a feel for what the actual number is. Okay, so formulas are great. Okay, it's nice to have a formula because when you're given one, you feel like you've given, been given exactly how to solve the problem. But what's important is that you know what values to put in the formula and what is represented. So if you're finding the circumference and you're given the diameter, you need to put the diameter in the formula. Okay, and if you're given the radius, you need to put the radius in the formula and you need to be sure that you know whether you've been given the radius or the diameter. So let's look at the first question. We'll highlight the important information. Anderson rollerbladed around a circular lake with a radius of three kilometers and we want to know how far did Anderson rollerblade. Okay. So notice that we've been given the radius so we will use C equals 2 pi r. Now we just need to replace the r with the radius of 3 kilometers. So c equals 2 pi times 3. And now we multiply the 2 and the 3 to get 6. So these are all multiplied. 2 pi means 2 times pi. Okay. And in general we put the number before the pi symbol. We put the pi last. So it's 6 pi kilometers and this is our exact form. Okay. So that's nice that he went 6 pi kilometers uh, but we want to get a feel for what this is. Remember pi is 3.14, it's 3 and a little bit so it's 6 times 3 which is 18 plus a little bit more but let's write this in approximate form using this approximation. So we would say that it's 6 times 3.14. Let's change this to approximately. 
And now we'll multiply this on the calculator. And we get 18.84 kilometers. So this is approximate. And I just want you to see that this is approximate and this is one approximation. Now notice if we had used the pi button on the calculator, it would give us a better approximation. Remember, the pi button is storing even more decimal places. If I multiply this by 6, that's 6 times pi. Notice we get 18.84955. We could get more decimal places. And also notice that if we rounded this to the nearest hundredth, we'd round up to 18.85. So we wouldn't even get the same exact answer. So when we're using pi and irrational numbers and we approximate, there are different values that we can get. It's depend, it depends on what we use as our approximation. Let's look at the next one. Liz bought a 14-inch pizza. The server said the 14-inch measurement referred to the diameter of the pizza, and we want to find the circumference. So, since we're given the diameter, we're going to use the circumference equals pi times the diameter, and the diameter is 14. And again, typically, even though the formula is written as pi times diameter, we write the number first, and we say that it's 14 pi, and the units were inches. Okay. Now this is our exact form. Now let's get an approximate form. So that would be 14, we'll use 3.14 for the approximate. 14 times 3.14 equals 43.96. So 43.96 inches is the circumference or the distance around the pizza. Let's look at the next one. Here we're not given an application, we're given a diagram. And it's important when you're given a diagram to make sure you're reading the numbers correctly from the figure and using the correct version of the formula and putting in the correct values. So here's our circle and we're asked, are you given the radius or diameter of the circle? How do you know? So notice that this line is going from one end to another and also the number, the value is put right in the middle here. So this is telling us that we're given the diameter. So we're given the diameter because it's drawn across the whole circle, not half the circle. And also very important, it's going through the center. And what I mean by that, if you were given this, it goes across the circle, but we'd actually call this a chord. It wouldn't be the diameter. So notice how the diameter goes right through the center. Now let's find the circumference in exact and rounded form. So for exact form, we have pi times the diameter. Well, that's pi times 12.44. And again, we write the 12.44 first, and our units are meters. Now let's look at an approximate form using 3.14. And I'll just use this version right here and take 12.44 times 3.14 for pi. And we're asked to round to the hundredths place, so that'd be 39.06. Let me put my squiggly lines, 39.06 meters. So since I rounded, I put the squiggly lines to show that it's an approximation. Let's look at the last one. Okay, again, we're given a circle. We're asked, is this a radi radius or diameter? Notice it's going from the center of the circle uh, 
to the circle, but not going from one end to the other. Also notice this number is centered right above this piece. So this is a radius because it's from the center to, to a point on the circle. And I'll put in parentheses halfway, so it's going halfway across the circle, whereas the diameter goes all the way across the circle. So now let's find the circumference in exact form. We use 2 pi times the radius, so we need to multiply the radius by 2 to get the diameter. So we'll put 2 pi times 2.38. Now again, we multiply the 2 and the 2.38 and write that first. That gives us 4.76 pi inches. Now our approximate form we're going to use 3.14 for pi, so I'm going to replace pi with 3.14. So 4.76 times 3.14. We'll round this to two decimal places, the hundredths place. Here's the hundredths place, the thousandths place is five or greater, so we're going to round to 14.95. Let me use my approximate, 14.95 inches.